In my last video, I talked about a few products that I really regretted buying this past year, but today I wanted to switch it up and share with you the top five tech products that I am legitimately obsessed with. And the first one to start off with, which should be no surprise, is my Aura Ring. I love this guy. I pretty much wear it every single day. It is by far one of my favorite fitness trackers to wear on a daily basis because of its low profile design, but it still packs a punch in regards to tracking your health and fitness metrics. It provides a full breakdown of your sleep, activity, and it does so in a way that's just easy for me to understand Understand, while also still giving me insights on areas of my health that I can improve. The specific feature that I love the most and what I think is a huge selling point is the readiness score, which I check every single morning to understand how recovered my body is. It takes into account my sleep history and activity during the week, and it provides a score out of 100, giving me a good idea of how much stress I can take on for the day, or if I maybe need to take it a little bit easy and need to rest. The only thing that does bug me about the Oura Ring is its cost, specifically the subscription cost, which is around $6 a month. This gives you access to basically all the premium insights and health data I mentioned earlier, but if you decide not to use their membership, you only get the three health scores on the main page and you get limited access to the library of educational content. And if you think about it, it's already a pretty expensive device around four to 500 bucks, and then you factor in paying that monthly subscription to get the most out of the device. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of that either. However, even even with that minor frustration of having to deal with the subscription fee, the Oura Ring is typically the tracker I recommend people look into, especially if they're just getting started into looking into the fitness tracking game, or they're looking for something that won't be too distracting or obvious on their body or wrist. My second favorite product that I bought this year were actually the second generation AirPods Pro. I knew the original first generation AirPods Pro were great, and in my opinion, they changed the game for noise cancellation earbuds, and these Gen 2s? even better. The sound quality is great, especially with the spatial audio. The noise cancellation levels are even better. They have a longer battery life up to 30 hours with the new case. And the two features that I really love about this are the fact that you can actually now finally adjust the medium volume by simply swiping up or down on the stem. And I love how the AirPods Pro Gen 2 case can now be found through the Find My app by activating the new integrated speaker, which is actually pretty loud. The mic has also been upgraded when making calls, but I still feel like the background noise comes through on the other end when speaking to somebody on the phone, but that is very minor in the grand scheme of things, and I definitely would rank these as some of the top Bluetooth headphones to have. In fact, I'm thinking about making a video sharing my favorite workout headphones. Let me know in the comments below if that's something that you're interested in. My third favorite piece of tech was my Peloton. Man, do I love that bike. I never thought I would be an indoor cycling type of person, but I am definitely one now. It was exactly what I needed in terms of having some sort of way to stay active and get some cardio in during these cold New York City winters. It's a high quality, well-made piece of equipment. It doesn't take up too much space in my room and the classes are honestly great. Usually I stick to my two favorite instructors, Ali Love or my guy Alex Toussaint, and I'll choose anywhere between a 15 to 30 minute ride three to four times a week. Now a feature I like that not many people talk about is the fact that you can connect your Apple Watch or your Whoop to the bike to use as a live heart rate monitor to see which cardio zones you hit throughout your workout. Now it does suck that you can't connect an Android based watch to the bike as I've tried it with my Pixel Watch and my previous Galaxy Watch. So hopefully there will be some sort of update for that in the coming months. Now the the biggest elephant in the room is the price. The Peloton bike will definitely cost you some bread running anywhere between 1500 to 2500 for the bike itself. And then you would have to pay around 44 bucks a month for the all access membership to the workout classes. And I know that might be too expensive for some, and there are plenty of alternative exercise bike options out there, but the Peloton bike definitely was worth the investment for me as I literally use it all the time. And you know what? I actually think I recently passed my 100th workout. The fourth tech product that I would consider one of my favorite purchases would be my TheraBody Wave Solo Massage. Ball. It's almost like my personal Tony Stark Iron Man lacrosse ball. My nano ball? <sighs> I don't want to play with your ball. I take this guy everywhere. I take it to work and use it at my desk. I use it on the plane when I'm going on a long flight. And I love taking it to the gym if I'm feeling a little bit tight in certain areas before heading into a workout. It's better than the Wave Duo that I mentioned in my other video as it's super portable and the form factor is actually perfect for getting into those super tough areas like the glutes, traps, and low back. You can also control the Wave Solo and the TheraBody app through Bluetooth and follow along with different routines based on what your focus is for that day. TheraBody designed this in a way that it absorbs and mutes the vibrations it gives off once it makes contact with a hard surface and the price is fairly affordable being under $100, which is a pretty good deal that you can't beat. Definitely recommend getting this or maybe the Hypersphere Mini from Hyperize if you are interested in getting a vibration massage ball. Just keep in mind that the Hypersphere Mini is a bit louder and you can't control it with Bluetooth. My last and favorite tech purchase of this year was actually the iPad Mini 6. I bought it for myself as a gift earlier in the year and honestly, I didn't know how beneficial it would be in addition to my 2021 
iPad Pro. And wow, was I really shocked at how I've been able to use this thing for a variety of tasks. Of course, I use it as my on-the-go travel media and content consumption device, but I also use it as a teleprompter for these YouTube videos. I write notes in this thing as if it was a notepad, and I even use it as my portable workout class device where I can pull up fitness apps like Apple Fitness Plus or the Peloton app and use it to follow along with a quick yoga session or core workout on a screen that is bigger than one of my phones. Its small size in combination with the Apple Pencil truly make this iPad mini a very versatile device. Yes, it doesn't have that 120 hertz display or the M1 chip and it doesn't have the face unlock, but those are very minor drawbacks that honestly don't bother me. I definitely plan on making a video soon talking about all the different ways I use the iPad mini 6 throughout the year. So make sure you are subscribed to stay tuned for when that comes out. If you haven't seen my video on the tech products I regretted purchasing this past year, check this video out right here. And if you're interested in other cool tech videos I've made, click right here. As always, stay healthy, be happy, and embrace the hype. Woo!